as a reminder, I do not watch movie trailers or streaming show trailers before I'm going to watch a movie or a show, either for my own personal enjoyment or to review on this podcast. So I knew nothing about Triangle of Sadness before watching it. I just know that it was uh, nominated for Best Picture, and I'm trying to catch up with all the Best Picture nominees before the Oscars. So Triangle of Sadness was written and directed by Ruben Ostland and stars Harris Dickinson, Charles B. Dean, Dolly DeLeon, uh, other names I don't want to butcher. It's kind of a, it's strange. There's a large cast, but it it's uh, a small cast at the same time. Also, full spoiler warning, because I don't know what information has been released since I don't watch trailers or read synopsis, so full spoiler warning. Uh, it also co-starred Woody Harrelson. So, first off, right off the top, I want to say that after I watched the movie and I looked up kind of some trivia about the movie, trying to figure out wh- how the heck this thing came together and, like, why it was made. Uh, I read the really sad news that Charles B. Dean passed away last year unexpectedly at only the age of 32. Uh, I guess right around the time, right before the film premiered, and uh, that was just really sad, so I just wanted to say that I'm aware of that information and my condolences uh, to... Her and her family. That's what that was really like terrible, surprising news to read. So, none of my thoughts about the movie or any movie in general should ever be taken as like personal opinions about the people involved that make the movies. Making movies is hard, and making anything is hard. So, it's never personal. Uh, so, yeah, having said that, I was in a triangle of sadness while watching this movie. I hated it. I did not like this movie at all. Uh, there was. I mean, there's no reason for me to be subtle when the movie's not subtle. Uh, I I mean, we spend 40 minutes, 40 minutes of the two and a half hour runtime with this main character couple, the models, the influencer and the model. And it's like, they're like barely a footnote by the end of the movie. Like the movie essentially starts in the last 10 minutes of the yacht section. And the movie is like the island section. Like you could have cut out all the bullshit in the first 40 minutes. You could have cut out 30 minutes of the yacht uh, scenario because my point is this, the point was made. I, we understood that, uh, you know, rich people bad, pretty people petty, pretty rich people pretty bad, <laughs> okay? Uh, like that message was received long before the movie's runtime had ended and it also didn't really have anything new to say either oh rich people are out of touch rich people don't really help the world in the way that that we think that they do no shit um we you know rely and depend on service workers and lower income workers to make the society run i know i think a lot of people know that i think the problem is is the uphill struggle against the upper class to make the changes that we want to see in the world because they have so much power, because they have so much money. Like, a movie about proposed resolutions would be way more interesting than here's the problem. <laughs> um, I mean, what did I like? I thought I thought it was gorgeously shot. I did like the cinematography. I thought it was a beautiful movie. I mean, it was helped by the locations of this luxurious lot and this, you know, essentially beach getaway island that we come to find out, even though they don't really show that portion of it. Uh, the ocean looked beautiful. Um, yeah, so like the cinematography was, you know, was really well done. And I thought the performances were really good. Like, I believe that, you know, the model couple, the shit seller couple, the arms dealers, the, the waiting staff of the yacht, like they were all believable performances. I just didn't really like the... Um, it a lot that they were saying or that they were doing because it just was like kind of preaching to the choir and like saying things that you know if you observe and already understand these things you're just agreeing and if you don't observe and you disagree and you don't see the world that way this movie has nothing to offer you otherwise besides that um i did the one thing that i thought was interesting was kind of the the service worker who becomes the captain i'm the captain now um at the end where she doesn't uh i i I did i thought there was something interesting with that character's decision to be so hardcore and to be so ruthless i thought maybe the movie had a slight commentary on it's like the people that are evil that are that powerful and rich 
it's like not their fault because power and money inherently does that to even the strongest willed of people. Like I think the idea, the impression of that character is like she was a good hearted, good spirited character working a less than desirable job to support her family. She had, or or maybe herself. I think she said she didn't have kids. Um, and I think the maybe the message there at the end was she didn't have a lot going for her, uh, which is why she was latched on to the island life and. Which is maybe why she killed the model Yaya yeah, yeah, at the end. Um, but yeah, I thought it was interesting to just immediately have her go um, kind of just like full, you know, power hungry person. Which, it's not that the things that she was saying was wrong, I suppose. But it's just, there was there's an alternate version of this movie where the person in power has compassion and empathy and maybe illustrates that it is possible to be a good person at the top, but I think maybe the point of the movie was it's not, it's just impossible. So that was like the one thought-provoking, interesting commentary thing that in a two and a half hour movie, I was like, oh yeah, this 10 minutes is cool. Um, so yeah, so then at the end, they find out it's a resort kind of at the same time and uh, both in the larger crew and in the, in the individuals when, um, I can't remember her name, I watched it a few days ago. I know it was Dolly De Leon. I think that was playing the service worker, and then Yaya, yeah, yeah, the model, they like went off on their own for the first time, and they stumbled upon the resort. Which again, it's like, if it was that close, how did you not find it? But it doesn't matter. Um, and then the movie's over. And then there was also this subplot where like, the the new captain was like using Abigail was her name was like using the male model for her own personal gratification. But then he also was like into it and was like, let's tell them we're a couple. So I didn't know, I didn't understand the point or need or worth of that. Like when she showed up in like the submarine vessel with supplies and everything, like I thought that there was going to be a really cool opportunity to actually say something about, you know, socialism, which I guess the movie, it kind of does. But it just kind of glosses over it to get to I'm the captain now. I don't know. I just didn't like it. I actively disliked it pretty much the whole time I was watching it. I, I thought that, like, the shit puke stuff was definitely done for kind of, like, shock value. And there was not – it wasn't very substantive. It was, like, very surface level. I think, you know, for, like, commentary of high society and not appreciating the things that make – not appreciating the people that make things for you. I thought the menu, which I previously talked about already, was a much better version of a similar kind of feel and tone and message. Uh, it is a travesty that the Jordan Peele movie Nope didn't get nominated for anything and this got nominated for Best Picture. Like, give me a break. Uh, to rate it, 4 out of 10. The cinematography was good. The performances were good. Almost everything else I actively disliked, and uh, I'm bummed that I forced myself to watch it. And I don't know that I'm going to force myself to sit through movies I don't like anymore. Because if I gave you two hours, I don't think the last ten minutes is going to change much. <laughs> anyway, I will get out of here. Those are my thoughts on Triangle of Sadness.